wish you all a very happy new year may this year bring lots and lots of happiness health and success to all of you all the phd aspirants watching this channel may you get admission in your dream phd at institute in the year 2023 and all the students who are already pursuing the phd may you get a lot of paper publications the year 2022 had been very special for us we had practically launched our first video last year in the month of january and all of you have given a lot of support and love to our channel in the last one year we do hope and pray that you will keep giving us your love and support in the year 2023 as well and i your one and only phd mentor dr ritika gaba i promise you that i will keep empowering you with more and more genuine in-depth and well-researched phd knowledge today's video is dedicated to the concept of phd stipend in this video we are going to tell you what is the meaning of phd stipend we will also tell you who can get a PhD stipend? How can you get a PhD stipend? Also, what is the amount or the perks which are usually benefited with PhD stipend? And what is the duration of the stipend? And any other important characteristic which is associated with this important PhD concept will also be discussed in this video. So now, without wasting any more time, let us start with our section 1 where I explain you the meaning of this PhD stipend. So PhD stipend, which is also known as a PhD fellowship, I'm very sure all of you have very frequently heard of both these words. So a PhD stipend or a fellowship can be said to be a monthly payout, a monthly payment, uh, a monthly amount which is given just like a monthly salary which is given to a PhD scholar or a student who is pursuing a PhD. We will definitely tell you what is this amount and what are the other benefits which are given out as payments in the subsequent part of this video. So who can get a PhD stipend? PhD stipend can only be availed or only be, is only given to full-time PhD scholars. And this is a concept not only associated with PhD in India, but rather across the world. Only students who are pursuing a full-time PhD, that is, they, these are students who are only dedicatedly giving their time to the PhD program and they are not pursuing any other additional job or any other additional assignment along with their PhD. These students go to the university very often, rather almost daily, just like other employees, they have to stay in the university campus for a regular period of time and they are involved with the day-to-day -day activities or many other activities of the university, especially related to their own department. So these full-time scholars are the ones who can avail a PhD fellowship or a PhD stipend. Does that mean that all full-time scholars get a PhD fellowship? We will discuss this question in the third section of our video, where we are going to discuss the various sources of PhD fellowship. With this, we come to the third part of the video, where we are going to discuss the sources of PhD funding or the PhD stipend. So on the screen, you can see a diagram where we mentioned three major sources for PhD fellowship in India. The first source which we are going to discuss in this video relates to the institutional fellowship. As the name suggests, the institution or the university from where you are pursuing your full-time PhD is going to give you a monthly stipend to pursue a PhD. Isn't it great? Indeed it is. But please remember, not all universities give out fellowship to their full-time PhD scholars. There are certain universities who give out a PhD fellowship on a rotation basis. There are certain who give out fellowship to certain group of uh, scholars, maybe the ones who are doing better than the others in the PhD program. However, it is important that before enrolling in an institution for a full-time PhD, 
you do check out the PhD guidelines of that institution to ensure that what kind of fellowship are they offering. The second source of funding is the Government of India or various departments under the Government of India. This is in fact one of the most important sources of PhD fellowship in India. Who hasn't heard of the famous UGC NET JRF examination? Now UGC NET is conducted in 80 different subjects related to humanities, social sciences, languages, management, commerce, economics and so on. When you're filling up the UGC NET examination form, you have two options. Either you fill up the UGC NET form or you fill up the GRF examination along with it. Provided you are within the eligibility criteria of filling up the GRF form. When you give the UGC NET examination, if you get a score which is amongst the top 0.5% of the student, then you will qualify the GRF examination of that subject. Once you qualify GRF, UGC NET GRF, then as soon as you take admission in a full-time PhD program of any UGC recognized university or institution, you will start getting a PhD fellowship. Similarly, for science subject, UGC conducts the UGC NET CSIR examination. What many students do not know that there are multiple other examination which also provides PhD fellowship. For example, the Department of Biotechnology conducts BET, which is Biotechnology Eligibility Test. We also have different other uh, fellowship examination like the JEST or INSPIRE or Pradhan Mantri uh, Research Scheme also gives out a hefty fellowship. There are certain very famous government bodies like the DRDO, ISRO, or the Department of Mathematics or the Department of Atoms, which gives out PhD fellowships. The third source, which is not very rampant in India currently, but a very important source of PhD fellowship are the corporates. Yes, corporates finance the PhD or gives PhD fellowship to students so that you can conduct a PhD research work related to their corporate domain. Okay, so these are all the important sources of PhD fellowship. From here, we move on to the next important question, which I'm sure all of you are dying to know. So what is the amount which is given to you on a monthly basis as stipend and what are the other perks associated with PhD fellowship? Though these fellowship amount and these perks might vary across institutions and fellowships, however, the most common amount which is given out by majority institutions is that the one which is prescribed by UGC. This is the same amount which you will get once you qualify the UGC net GRF examination. So UGC says, and we are also sharing the guideline of the same on the screen, you can have a look. Okay, so UGC says that a person will get a monthly stipend of 31,000 rupees as a GRF. And two years later, once they are promoted to SRF, they would be getting a monthly stipend of 35,000 rupees. Along with this, students also get a 20,000 rupees contingency amount annually. So what is, who is a JRF? A uh, JRF is Junior Research Fellow. As soon as you join a PhD program, you are given the designation of a Junior Research Fellow and you get 31,000 rupees. With two years of satisfactory performance as a JRF, you are then promoted to an SRF, which is, which is Senior Research Fellow and you start getting 35,000 rupees a month. The 20,000 rupees contingency amount can be used to purchase your books and stationery and other similar things. Besides this, there are many institutions who would be providing you with either an HRA or free hostel accommodation. There are certain institutions who also finance certain number of conferences, including international conferences. There are others who provide you with uh, uh, money to buy a laptop and some go to the extent of providing you a startup grant as well. So there are many different perks associated with being a PhD fellow.
of course the biggest amongst them according to me is the prestige and the pride which comes along with this designation just imagine the corporates or your institution or your government is giving you um, money to pursue research for them so definitely this is the biggest perk associated with being a phd fellow here we move on to the last part of the video where we are going to tell you the total tenure of this fellowship so a phd fellowship is usually given for a period of 5 years 2 years as a grf and 3 years as an srf if you are not able to complete your phd in these 5 years then from the 6th year you will simply stop getting your fellowship however you can definitely continue your phd as a regular student like any other non fellow student in the university with this we come to the end of this video i hope you found this video informative and did get answers to all your questions related to phd fellowship if you have any other questions or if you would like us to make videos on different kind of fellowship then please do let us know in the comment section below thank you so much for watching my video don't forget to share like and subscribe our channel